All right, everyone, got the turbo sold. Got to get it pulled off here and get into pulling the rest of the engine out of this car. We'll see how far we make it today, but we're just going to start grabbing everything, radiator, turbo, work on intake, all that stuff, get it down to pretty much a long block, and then we can lift the engine out once we get it unhooked from the train. So we're just going to start pulling everything apart. Already falling apart. <laughs> Rubber hose has been on there a minute. Car's been together for, shoot, probably five years now. Not in this configuration with the 5.3, just total, I think four, maybe four years. An 8 mil screwdriver, same thing when it comes to those clamps. Old crusty over there or what? Yeah, I gotta peel these clamps off the hooks. <laughs> At least they didn't leak. Still weren't gonna leak even if the clamp fell off. Let's see. <laughs> if we can get that one, if that one's loose, does it look like it'll pass by the turbo? Hell no. <laughs> it's too tight. We gotta get that one off. Yep. Which, you're not reusing these hoses anyway, are you? Um, probably not. Well, radiator's right gonna be relocated, so. Yeah, and I might end up doing a in line on the next revision, so. It's one of the safety things I've been kind of worried about is these hoses exploding. So, doing a in line, kind of like what's on glider, be a little bit more robust. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was asking if I could just pull out the trusty little knife here. <laughs> the knife? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That works. Of course, I only have a two-inch area to work with. Got it! Radiator hose down. Good old uh, shot. Pro tip, the radiator works as a real good tool to holding on these things. Unplug the plug. I have no idea. Why don't you have an idea? Because I'm just the freaking higher hand here. Paid, paid with food. Food. Paid with food. Food and beer. Yeah. It was the freaking heat shield. All right. Woo. Five inch. Lost on this bad boy. Oh, Big you stuff. You want that? Big stuff. You like my body bolt that I used? That's been on there for a while. I had to use the uh, stock Camaro body bolt right there that Alex has in his hand for the uh, for that clamp. I couldn't find the right one. In there. So we got to get the turbo actually out before we get the radiator because I forgot I I stuffed a fan in here. So on this build. With this big turbo to make it all fit, I put a fan, I put a, uh, a pusher fan here and a puller fan here and staggered them. It actually works really good. A lot of people wonder if this cools the car and just that one fan actually pretty much keeps the car cool. It barely kicks this one on only when sitting in traffic and stuff. So it's worked out pretty well, but time for some more changes. This thing right here, like the worst, best thing ever. They're out of frame. Would not recommend. All oh, the what's a pain is the turbo drain. Can't even get a crow's foot in there. No. Nope. Need real strong fingertips. So we're getting close now. Got the turbo all in bolted. Got to get the oil feed off. Get a few fittings here and then this hook will come out, uh, unhook the, the methanol kit, and then we should be good. If you get at least turbo out, radiator out, and then we start working on the intake and all that type of crap. So everything comes out way easier than it goes in. That's, that's for sure. Oh my god. Oh Jesus, this thing is terrible. Oh. There it is. Big spoolie boy. Going to a new home. Already sold it, so before I even had it off the car. I hit up some local guys here that are building a similar Camaro, wanted a big single for it, and I got you. So uh, we're going to change some things up, so I'm going to go ahead and sell this. It's been an awesome turbo. It's made good power, and on to the next project for this thing. Wanna get you new things for your pockets, though. Run it up. I used to be quiet and out of luck. Now I move up and move humble cause the hate and the jealousy. All right, get this radiator out of here. Hopefully everything's unplugged. We'll, we'll find out. Unplug one of them. I think there is something still plugged in, actually. Yeah, it looks like it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. 
Yeah, you gotta hold some. So do that. It's a, it's a tight one. Yeah. Especially when it goes curved. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Oh, oh. Hold on. Where's our bucket? <laughs> Over here, but you can't get it under the car. Drop the car too low. Just in time. There you go. <laughs> All right, going over to the park shelf for now. Yep. You got to be careful with the little Alex around here. Where's his boots? They get like this big of a puddle of antifreeze on the ground. He hits the deck. It's happened like three times. <laughs> That's all because you and having to have a coated floor. <laughs> One little is spot. Like the slickest coating I've ever seen. Uh huh. So, the eleventh thing I hate about this car that I kind of meant to go over, but uh, was this contraption of crap I got going on. So the map sensor, I used an LS9, a bunch of hose clamps, and this block that's like, yeah, it's just, this is bad. Hob switch to the fuel pump, so if anything fails here, or gets pinched or cut or whatever, this sensor wouldn't get the right reading. So this is, that that's pretty terrible. It's worked, it worked okay for the time that I had it, but yeah, it's bad, real bad. 15. No, 15. 15! So what all comes off? Everything so, off the front, everything yeah, off the top? Yeah, we can pop these, get the hot side out. Uh, it'll drop down to the bottom. We're gonna take all the water pump off, intake off, valve covers off, pretty much get it down to just bare long block, and then it'll come out. It, it comes out, it, it'll barely clear the balancer to this here, but everything else off the front of the motor is gonna come off, so we'll tear all that down. Mama telling me count up your blessings and run it up. Nowadays nothing really is ice. Only one of me and nobody like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's ice. I got wifey on blingin' sheets. Freeze, photo, photo, please, no photos. No, no, please, no, no, please, no photo. So close, but yet so far away. I got paid today. I get paid to stay. Right back like that. White shirts available at BuildTuneRace.com. Pain today, thought it take the pain away. In my own lane, finger roll. I would never sell my only soul. Heard your whole team was for sale. Gotta pull a Clyde on the exhaust, rotate it, and it up. <laughs> oh, it seems like I build everything. You gotta corkscrew everything. Yeah, corkscrew it. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? Do you leave it in A. Maybe put a bottle on it, make it look burning. If, depending on how this engine looks and if it doesn't end up back in this car, there's a good chance that this will be the new burnout engine. Uh, cause I won't see as much load and boost and all that stuff being in Bernie once the old 4.8 gives up, but that thing's been pretty rock solid, so that might just be staying in there too. We definitely found some more fluid. Oh, okay. Who knew a heater core held fluid? Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> Street car life. Whoop, whoop. Hey. Dang, this car's getting lighter by the minute. Shoot. The floor's getting wetter by a minute. We need some wet floor signs for Alex now. Oh god, it's over rotating. Sorry to lose all the air. The nut for that one's over there. Oh, I was gonna unclip it, but it unclipped itself. <laughs> I'm broke. It's good thing we're rewiring the car. Whoops. Well, that, that part could have stayed. Well, the ultimator might end up in a different location. That's a mess and a half waiting to happen. That bucket, though, look at that. It's about the perfect size, it really is. Till this happens. That's funny water pump. Build an F body, they said. Mm. Real nice. Part of the plan, though, is to uh, cut all this out so it'll be back to glass. So at least we'll be close to the rear cylinders, getting a lot more access to the intake, be able to put a taller intake on this thing. So LS6 intake for some. Can't get the bolt out. So I forgot that the stupid intake you got to have the bolts in it and like lift it out and let them hang in the holder and then carry it out so i do have to pull the fuel rail stuff out anyway because the arp bolt 
and it comes up and hits the cowl right here. So I can't get the bolt out. And I definitely won't be able to get the very back bolt out. So, yep, that's uh, it's an issue. So now the fuel rails will come off separately. Well, I'm gonna have a big old mess either way. One way or another, it's, it's a mess. Trying to do it nice. See where I end up. It was easy until we ended up underneath the car here. Realest, we might never know. All this acting, you go play a role. Give you the world when they sign you up. Try you out and then they line you up. Ooh. Now you're looking hungry, ribs are touching, need some food. Now you're all on live acting, surprised, but you was full. Almost there. Last bolt. And then take it. Bang. Ground on the head. There you go. Oh. Well, we're getting closer here. This is, one of these is the cylinder that's hurt. I think it's this one and this one, which actually look fairly clean. But we'll get some tape on the cylinders, get the heads off, or, well, the heads can stay on it, uh, but the valve cover's gotta come off to get it out of the car, so do that, and then we'll end up having to unhook it from the tranny and stuff like that. Get her sealed up real quick. So sometimes you just gotta climb in here to get a little bit closer to the bolt F body life here. If anybody's worked on one of these, they know. Uh, just trying to get the grounds off the back of the head and then pretty much other than valve covers, we'll be able to go to the inside and under the car, unhook the tranny and then the engine comes out. A lot of people will tell you to drop like the cradle in a Camaro and drop everything off the bottom. But after doing the raised stand up radiator, it's pretty easy to get the motor out. The tranny doesn't have to come out of the car at this point. I don't know if I'm gonna to have it refreshed or not, but the, I can just hang the tranny in the car, hook onto the engine, get it out of here, mess with that, and then it can all go back in, at least save half the hassle. I've never dropped the K-member in one of these cars. I guess it. I guess it's not terrible, but it also help if you had a two post lift to raise the car off of the K-member if you dropped everything down through the bottom. So. It is doable. Like I said, you got to take everything off the front with the balancer and stuff though with a, if you do this cut off radiator here, you can get it out. It gets real close, but it will come out the top. So we hit a little bit of a roadblock here in the back on these. If you've ever built one or whatever, they you run a Corvette oil pressure sensor. Well, they're right down tight in here. So they're extremely hard to get to. And normally I would just grab it and pull it out, but I wanted to try to use this motion lift plate. This is actually a Gen 5 one for like the direct injected motors, but I think enough of the bolts will line up, I'll be able to use it. But that has got to go so it can slide back over it. So I got to try to get it off in the uh, car, which thanks to Carter leaving his socket at home, even though he didn't know I needed it. Uh, if we get the right socket, I could probably pull it off in the car and then slide that plate back, bolt it down and pull it out. So that might a little bit of a roadblock, but we'll get past it. So fun fact, you can actually get a head off with the studs in this car and the heater box. So the first time that I hurt the piston when the injector went bad and stuff on it, uh, lifted, if you get everything unbolted, kind of move everything out of the way, get all the rockers off everything, you can actually slide the head up and it just barely clears the box back here and you can slide the head out of it this way. And it's uh, pretty cool that you can actually replace a head gasket if needed in this, but now that we're gonna be deleting all the heater and everything else and cutting the cowl, make everything so much easier to work on plug changes. If you have to remove or replace a head gasket, whatever, it'll make it so much easier in the future when we're working on this thing. Header number two. Maybe. Almost. Not quite. There it is. Truck header life. These things work pretty well. As you guys can see, I just cut and put a V-band on them and stuff, and they've, they're not the prettiest, but they've worked. I think I'm gonna go, I think we're gonna run some good headers on the next setup, build a lot nicer turbo kit. That was my first one that I ever built and tried, but otherwise I think for the most part, other than unhooking the starter and getting the bolts out of the motor mounts, the long block's pretty much ready to come out. Just need to unbolt the tranny from it, so that'll be next time we work on this thing. Hopefully get the tranny off of it, pull the motor out and check it out. So if you guys want to see whatever happens or try to find out with me what happened to this thing, uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video. Give you the world when they sign you up. Try you out and then they line you up. Ooh. Now you're looking hungry, ribs are touching, need some food. Now you're all on live acting, surprised, but you was fooled. Boy, get out the way, it's been a day, now you're old news.